Okay, that sounds good. Well, um, first, I wanted to say thanks for the opportunity to join you at Product Camp this year. And a big thank you to our sponsors of the event. Uh, so it, it takes a lot, a lot to get these things going. So appreciate all the work behind the scenes. Uh, I'll start off by telling you a little bit about myself, if you didn't already know about me. Um, my name is Catherine E. Clay. I reside in Dallas, Texas, and I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. I actually came to Texas to work as the UX leader in technology for Top Golf at the headquarters in downtown Dallas, leading the product delivery UX and business analyst team for top golf venues. And then prior to that, I was in UX and product management for the FedEx mobile app at FedEx in Memphis. Now I'm currently the creative director at Global Genes, which is a nonprofit advocacy organization for rare disease. So the title of today's talk, as you well know, is concept to execution, delivering a product. And the real purpose of this talk is to share with you my product delivery experiences and learnings in the hopes that I can help and encourage you in your journey to deliver. I've worked at a variety of different types of organizations over the years, ranging from corporate to nonprofit, big and small, and in just about every organization I've worked in, there is a common denominator that they all struggle with, and that is the ability to execute and to execute well. Whether you're a leader or an individual contributor, whether you're working in a team of five or 500, whether your environment is agile or a waterfall, one of the most critical things you can learn in your professional career is how to take an idea or a product from concept to execution. There are several things that I've learned personally uh, over the years that I'd love to pass on to you, and hopefully you can take some of those learnings and apply them practically in your day-to-day -day at work. So the first thing is let's talk about some of the struggles that organizations encounter when it comes to delivering a product. I'm sure at one point or another you've experienced, or if you haven't already, you will experience some of the following things. Have you ever received a mandate from le leadership to build a product or deliver an experience, but that vision wasn't very clear? Have you ever been in a meeting with a colleague or with a team planning work and you're looking around thinking, why am I so confused? Because the ask is not well defined. Have you ever worked on a team that can't make decisions or there's no one to actually drive or move things forward? So there's a lot of frustration that can happen at work and a lot of miscommunication and waste. And we spend the majority of our days managing people more so than we do managing the actual work. So let's talk about what are some key ingredients that we need to execute and not just to execute, but to execute well. Well, it doesn't really matter what type of environment you work in. So for example, when I worked at FedEx, we were very agile, uh, coming from a waterfall mentality. At Top Golf, it was waterfall, agile, and project management. And currently, at my job now, Global Genes, it's project management with a splash of agile. So whether you're a leader or an individual contributor, whether you're working in a big team, there are specific things that you need to do to be able to do your job. And to me, I've discovered there's an approach to work that does allow you to deliver and make an impact no matter what type of environment you're in. There are commonalities through all working processes that boil down, they equate to the following things. So number one, you have to have an idea and a vision. And what I mean by that is you must have a very clear and well-defined idea for what it is you want to deliver. Because what happens if you don't? The next few weeks and months are frustrating and confusing because you and your team are trying to decipher what that idea or vision is. 
And oftentimes when you think you do have the right idea, you find out down the line that no, that's not really what the ask was in the first place. So what can you do to help with this? So one thing that I've definitely taken advantage of is taking the time to develop a creative brief. It can be in Google Docs, it could be in Word, whatever format works for you. Uh, I found that when there is a lack of clarity in goals or ideas, it's super helpful to have something tangible that can facilitate conversation to help you develop that more. So the most effective use of this is to use it in a meeting. So bring it up, say, hey, you know what? I've got this template that we can fill in and doing it in real time, face to face, because a lot of times I think I can admit, you know, we don't read our emails a lot or we we don't have time to read documents. So doing those actually in real time is a great way to get your team to kind of focus in on the things that really matter. This year, we were kicking off the redesign of our podcast at Global Genes, and everyone had ideas about what they thought the podcast should feel like, look like, the type of content, the logo. You know, And a creative brief is very focused. I mean, if you use it in a kickoff meeting or any meeting, it's a great way to get them to focus on the things that matter most and to help you deliver value. So you can find a template online, you can create your own, but it's definitely something that will help you uh, further down the line as you keep revisiting it. So number two, in addition to an idea and a vision, you need to have a plan. So you must have a plan to execute. Think back on your own experiences and try to remember how you've executed on things in the past. What was the experience like? Was it good? Was it bad? This may sound like a silly example, but I've been working on holiday cards with our team to send out to patients, advocates, donors at Global Genes. Okay, that's great. Love the idea. Holiday cards are awesome. So now I'm working with the team and saying, let's talk talk through this because we get we have to get more concrete now. We're talking logistics. Where are we ordering cards from? Who has the distribution list? Where do we get cards printed? What's the messaging? We need to take the idea and start fleshing it out. And we do that by asking questions. I'm sure everyone has heard the devil is in the details and it's absolutely true. But there is a balance in the planning. And what I mean by that is being able to take an idea and flesh it out with the team add just enough detail to the plan, but not waste a ton of time creating something that's fully baked. Because by the time you fully bake it, the world's moved on to something else and the holidays have passed you by. So brainstormed with the team, made a short list. Now we have a plan and we have some tentative dates to it. So moving on, in addition to an idea, a vision, a plan, you need a driver or drivers. So wonderful. We've got a plan. What do we do now? Follow through. It's one thing to have a plan. It's another to actually execute on it. You have to want to execute. And to me, I've experienced over the years that people generally want to get to that finish line. But in order to get to the finish line, you need to drive continuously. You don't just create a plan and let it sit and age. We all know milk doesn't get better with age. It spoils. So how do you drive? The idea of driving is to keep things on track and make progress and to constantly move forward. I love to keep my meetings to 30 minutes usually, and that's for a reason. I truly believe that you can say what you need to say and determine next steps in a meeting within a 30 minute time period. And of course, there's, there are always exceptions. But when I first started working at FedEx, for example, we were in meetings all day, every day. It was very difficult to get work done. We'd have two-hour meetings. And I noticed that the majority of our meetings really could be more productive if we shortened them to 30 minutes. Not that I don't like conversing with my colleagues, but if you want to move forward and drive to execution, you have to continue taking the next steps. And that's in the day-to-day. 
and it's hard sometimes. So it was an interesting experiment when I shortened meetings to 30 minutes, everyone felt much more compelled to get to the point a lot faster and to determine what we needed to do for the next meeting. In addition, make sure to prep for your meetings. There's nothing worse than sitting in a meeting with no real agenda and no path forward. Email less and talk through things more during meetings. Again, I said I myself struggle to sit and review an email or an attachment, especially if I'm really busy. And I find it's a lot faster to review it face to face in real time. Work with your team, use your meeting time productively, and think about in advance what you need to get out of it in order to keep driving forward. One meeting I truly believe you need is some kind of backlog or progress or status meeting. Uh, it can be a stand-up every day for 15 minutes. It can be an hour-long meeting once a week. But this should happen regularly as a check-in and going through the list of priorities and making sure that you're intentional in conversation about assigning work and following up. Anyone in any role can typically do something like this. I think a lot of people think, oh, well, in product delivery, it's a scrum master that's working with the team or the product manager or the product owner. If you're a UX designer, if you're a UX researcher, if, you, if you're the CEO, you can schedule a meeting and keep things on track. So be intentional about that. The point is, whatever role you play, know that it's important for you to drive forward to execution just as much as anyone else. So key ingredients to summarize, idea and vision, plan, driver, or drivers. Last but not least, your character and actions contribute to executing and executing well. The only thing you can truly control in the big scheme of things is how you operate and how you can lead by example. And execution requires leadership, no matter what role you are. A few things to keep in mind for yourself as you work day to day that you can apply are the following. Keep a positive attitude. attitude. Granted, venting oftentimes is therapeutic, but spend the majority of your time building up your team and not tearing them down. Don't be that person that divides and try to unify people more. Have patience and understanding. Maybe not everyone runs at your pace. Maybe you think way too quickly, you know, too far ahead, and a lot of people struggle to keep up. That's fine. Allow them to catch up and meet them where they are. Try to discover their strengths and find opportunities where they can contribute. Communicate, communicate, communicate. The more you talk, the more you reveal new things, the more information is shared. Set up one-on-ones with anyone and everyone. You don't have to be a manager or a supervisor. You could do something with someone else on another team just to pick their brain or brainstorm. Allow collaboration to happen. Don't force everyone to do what you think is best, but allow the product delivery journey to evolve uh, somewhat organically sometimes. Ask a lot of questions. I managed the UX and BA team at Topgolf. We were always working with the product management team, always with development, asking questions, defining and refining, and that is a continual process. Take the time and interest to ask questions whenever you get a chance. It may provide you more clarity and it may provide someone else listening to the conversation the same clarity. Create some visuals, even if you're not a designer. Visualizing is one of the most important things you can do to execute. And I'm not talking about creating a perfect prototype or a perfect mock-up. When you're in a meeting, bring up PowerPoint and start laying things out. Write some text, get some shapes on there, create a flow. Visualizing helps people work through things. And in general, it gives people an idea of what the concept is. Follow up and follow through. I'm sure you all have experienced many times, oh yeah, 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 I'll email that to you or I'll schedule that meeting and it never happens. 
don't say you're going to do something and not do it. You don't need to be the reason you can't deliver. And then lastly, know your limits and know when to take a step back. Sometimes as hard as you push to execute, it backfires. For whatever reason, it's just not going to happen. And know that it's okay to take a step back and know when the tank becomes empty or the team is losing momentum. I've learned in my experience that forcing things to happen sometimes isn't a good thing. Um, Well, it's never good to force anything, but um, try to let things happen organically because they tend to work out on their own. It may not be the way you think it will work out, but they oftentimes do work out. So be open to that. So I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for questions or if anybody has any other experiences that they want to share. Um, So I will check and see if, okay, we do have a question. How does your org structure dictate the way you drive? Uh Uh-oh. Hang on. How does your org structure dictate the way you drive follow through? project management, heavy versus agile. How have you handled these structures differently? Okay, so those are really great. Yeah, yeah. so this, this was my question. Yeah. 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 So, so how did, You mentioned kind of being in the different scenarios. Yes. So I'll, I'll go with the first one. How does your org structure dictate the way you drive follow through? So I think just, you know, I mentioned a, a couple of different organizations I've worked for. Um, and they've all had their own method, their own approach for organization structure and how to get work done. And what I have found in all of those is that it's really great to have a base methodology or approach to how you work. But a lot of times people get really stuck in the process and, and not so much in actually creating the work and delivering value. It's more about um, using these types of environments to push out products, something or some experience, whatever it might be, instead of looking at how are we delivering value. So sometimes, you know, agile will, um, will drive the way that an organization is structured and, you know, project management the same way, but the, the nuts and bolts of all those things are the same. You have to have a vision. You have to have leadership. You have to have a lot of these basic things. And I think a lot of times those get lost um, and people are focused more on the process than they are on these key ingredients. And then to go to your second question, how have you handled these structures differently? Uh, So I think when I first started in the industry, I have 16 plus years experience um, just in this type of world. And and I've seen a lot of different things over time. And I have truly discovered that it doesn't really matter how it's structured um, to be effective in an organization and to deliver something, whether it's an experience or a product or a feature. You, you have to work with your team. You have to collaborate. You have to communicate. There are all these key things that you, you need to have and you need to do um, to be able to look past the structure, to look past how an organization is, is um, structured and, and focus on the actual work. That's what I would say. Sure, yeah. You know, for me personally, I've been in situations that were totally, you know, it's like every everyone, I guess, is striving for agile, but uh, I have yeah. yet to be at a place that truly is. Um, and so, you know, we're really project management heavy and they're, they're deep in the weeds. And, um, you know, I think it just comes down to whether you've got heavy project management or not. Like you say, I think I heard it's like communicate your objectives and push for, you know, uh, set, setting the bar that that's what we're working towards and getting project management on board, even uh, if it's not like a truly agile environment, it's still a way to kind of inch towards that. 
Yes. And not to say you, you can always improve the environment. You can always improve the process. I'm very process oriented, but I also understand that when we focus too much on process, it distracts us from what our goals really are, you know, and, and that's yeah. to deliver an experience or deliver value through these solutions. Yeah. And then totally. you also asked one other question, what does taking a step back look like in application? So that's a great question. And I knew that we had a short period of time. So there was so much more that I could have included in this talk. But um, I think for me personally, and, and take, take out of it what you will, but taking a step back. Um, so I have worked in an organization, FedEx, and I think a lot of times you, you know, when you are trying to deliver something, you're working with a product team um, and you're wanting to get to that finish line. A lot of times you can spend a lot of energy on driving too hard and making, trying to make things work, trying to get people to see what you see. Uh, and it oftentimes makes more stressful environment instead of taking a step back and saying, not everybody has to, to do the same thing I'm doing. Not everybody has to see things the way I see them. How can I take a step back? How can I meet people where they are? And how can I look for opportunities to work together and maybe just slow down even um, so other people can catch up? Um, and for me, that's been a huge lesson um, to take a step back more instead of constantly driving, 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 um, because you end up alone like that. <laughs> uh, you know, so when you take a step yeah. back, you give the team an opportunity to work with you and go together more in unity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's see, Ian has a question. Do you have any tips or strategies for dealing with unrealistic expectations from stakeholders, business, and organization? And I do. Uh, so I, I've worked with a large variety of stakeholders um, and leaders in different organizations. And a lot of them, you know, I think majority of them always have good intentions. Um, they have they have innovative ideas and goals. However, I think they set unrealistic expectations because going back to what I was saying about creating a plan and actually thinking through the details and the logistics, a lot of people don't uh, they don't think through or take the time to think through how long something takes to actually deliver. And uh, you know, so for example, we're working on a community platform wanting to deliver that in eight weeks. And the more we defined and refined what that looked like, what that vision and idea looked like, it was like, wow, you know, didn't think about these things. We didn't think about that. So one of the biggest things I could recommend in this type of situation is if you don't communicate, they're not going to know. <laughs> So if you have a product owner or a leader who's saying, hey, I need you to deliver X, Y, Z, or I need you to do this. If you don't, if it's, if it's just a one-way conversation where you're like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Instead of a two-way dialogue where you're saying, I love that idea, yes, and I would like to share with you here are some things that we need to consider and that may become risks or challenges later on. You know, and a lot of times I find that people alter the way they think based on how much information they have. Um, so I would definitely say the biggest tip, communicate. Make sure that you are letting people know um, what you're thinking and what could and, and don't just say no. I mean, think of ways to solution, you know, think of other ways to, to go about what they're asking um, so that you're not the no person all the time. <laughs> Definitely a good tip. All right.
right, so all right. it looks like we have answered all the questions. Does anyone have any other questions or anything that they would like to share? All right. Well, that is quite all right. Uh, so I actually want to wrap up by just um, saying thank you again. I have two books that I actually wanted to recommend as reading for you all uh, in case you're interested. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the chat. One is called Sense and Respond, um, How Successful Organizations Listen to Customers and Create New Products Continuously. It is a fantastic book. Um, I've learned a lot, I've highlighted a lot, uh, and I know a lot of people that have probably already read it, um, but just wanted to leave you with that. And uh, I think um, Product Camp has my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me if you want to chat or connect. And uh, I enjoyed chatting today, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, Catherine. Um, also, just to the group, there are some lounges out there that it looks like folks are kind of hanging out in and talking in. So between sessions, if you're not grabbing a snack or a drink or doing something like that, you know, feel free to pop over to a lounge and talk shop and network a little bit. Um, but uh, amazing talk, Catherine. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to meet you. you. You too. Thank you. And you guys have a great rest of your Friday.